Well, what a blessing to be here today. Pastor, may God bless you so much. I'm so humbled. And I know God has ordained it that I should be here today for a purpose. You know, many times we think like, hey, you know, I came from Africa, and you think like, hey, you are so special. I'm not. I'm not. Only God can make such a thing to happen. Let us give another hand clap of praise to God. Come on. Come on. Hand clap of praise to God. Like the, the way how the pastor said, everything that he says is true. I came here to see Regina as my spiritual mom. I was adopted by David Grice and his wife 21 years ago. They loved me. They said, Fred, we love you. That's it. And uh, when I see what God is doing today, I cannot resist the tears to flow out of my eyes. My name is Fred Muyimba. I was born in Uganda. My English is very funny, very heavy for some people. You know, I started speaking English when I was a little boy, but even up to today, I cannot speak it clearly, but I'm just, try I'm just trying. I was born in 1968, 1969, so I'm 48 years. Today, I would like to share with you about trusting God. Everybody say trusting God. Trusting God. You know, it's easy to say trusting God. It's easy to preach about trusting God. You can, even people can write books about trusting God. But when it comes to the practical side, you know, you talk to people, you, you come to know whether they really be, trust God or not. Right. Yep. Many servants of God today, they talk about God, they believe in God, they are anointed by God, but they don't trust God. Come on. Pastor, what are you talking about? Elijah was a man of God. You know what he did? He called fire from heaven. I'm sure no one, no one here doubts Elijah. He was a man of God. But the very day, the moment when he doubted, yep. he ran for his life. Guess what happened? Yep. I'm here to share with you some of the things that I've seen. You know, I cannot tell the whole story. And I know that each and every one of you here, you have a story. But I'm here for a purpose. My parents were witch doctors. You know, witch doctors, these are people who are being used by evil spirits. They are people, you know, my dad was a kind of guy who could stand on fire for two hours and he was not being burned. He was a kind of a, guy, of a guy who could say anything against you and it happens there and then. We had a huge live snake that we used to worship. And that snake was like God to the house and to the entire family. We had a house for the evil spirits where we used to go and worship evil spirits. You know, we were very committed to this. We had this house. This house was built in a, very, in a very amazing way. If you know how God instructed Moses to construct the tabernacle of the, of the Lord, the same way the house for the evil spirits was constructed where I was born. This house had three major places. You know, there was the first room, the second room, 
and the inner room which was like the holy of holies we had a big table and on that table they used to put on a big box and that box had three things in it it had the walking stuff it had a port small port and that small port was sealed i don't know what was there no one was allowed to open it and it had three plates you know they, they were like plates but made in clay that box was always on the table we never put it down on the ground because whenever you could take it from the table and put it on the ground everybody would fall, would fall sick in the family we had this live snake the live snake we used to worship it used to be in four different places the first place was my bed under my bed there was a basket for that snake and the reason was that my parents were training me to become the main witch doctor so they wanted the snake really to maybe to do something with me as i was growing up the second place where the snake used to be was a, a, there was a basket under my father's bed and inside the, this the shrine where we used to go and worship evil spirits now in that inner room under the table there was another basket for the snake and the first place it was a demonic tree at this tree looked demonic so the snake used to be in that tree in the branch of the tree during the daytime so i was raised up in the jungle and I did my primary education within the village where I was born. And after my primary education, my parents decided to bring me to the capital city for my secondary education. And I thought that was great. It was my first time to come to the capital city. You are here today. You complain about the challenges and the hardships that you go through about day to day. But I want to say something to you. Maybe God is preparing you. I have learned to trust God through the challenges and the hardships that I have gone through. I am not all that educated. When we talk about people who are educated, I'm not there. I was born from the jungle because my mom and my dad, they were so poor. My dad could not manage to pay for the hospital bills so i grew up like that never had shoes in my feet so i loved to worship the evil spirits every single day now when they brought me in the capital city to continue with my studies one evening i was coming back from school and i decided to pass through the major city the capital city of uganda which is kampala something happened i ended up bumping into the street evangelists who shared with me about the love of jesus christ and i ended up accepting jesus you know god will never do any mistake remember i'm a son of a witch doctor my parents are raising me to become the main witch doctor and they brought me in the city just to have education not to accept christ now i stayed in kampala and every evening i could go to the church now these street evangelists were from philippines they introduced me to the local church and i was encouraged to go for bible studies every evening and i didn't know what was going to happen next when the school break came I had to go back in the village where my parents lived. Now this time, I'm going to meet my parents filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thought that when I share about this new life which I have received in Christ, my parents were going to be happy. It wasn't like that. 
Another thing happened to my mind because I knew that I had already accepted Jesus. I did not want the snake to come under my bed. How many of you here would like really to associate with the Satan? <laughs> so I said enough is enough. I'm going to kill the snake. And this is what I did. I get kerosene. You know kerosene? Kerosene? I put kerosene in the plastic bag. And I poured kerosene on the snake and I killed the snake. Give a hand clap of praise to God. I killed a snake. And I thought, oh, it's going to be great. But when I killed the snake, all the people in the family, they fell sick. They developed tumors all over their bodies. And the evil spirits came upon my dad. And my dad commanded my brother to kill me using a spear. That was a tough time for me. When I heard my dad asking my brother to kill me, I had to run for my life. And I went running through the banana plantations. So when my brother chased me with a spear and he failed to kill me, reach me he decided to throw the spear and the spear missed me a few inches and hit a banana tree that was the first day i started facing challenges in life they were determined to kill me because i killed a snake which was god to them and they were in fear that if they don't kill me they were going to die because a snake, it was, a, it was an animal in a family which was empowering my dad to do strange things. So he thought that he was going to lose all his power. They tried their level best to kill me. But I thank God that I'm still alive to this very day. I ran into the jungle. It was a rainy season and I cried until my eyes lost shape. I said, Lord, if you really exist, Lord, if you rescue me from the hands of my brothers and my father, Lord, I'll always live to serve you. Let us give a hand clap of praise to God. I'm serving God because God protected me from my parents. I spent seven nights in the jungle i had nothing to cover myself it was raining every night and i almost lost hope let me say this to you i know each and every one of you here you have a story you've gone through some challenges in life trusting god is a choice Yes. You have to make a decision. No matter what you are going through, no matter challenges you are facing, if you decide to trust God, if you make a decision to trust God, I want to say this and I want to declare this to you, that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, he will never let you down. He is a God. Yes. He will protect you. Amen. And I will, ne I will never, I'll never forget, as I was crying in the jungle, I felt like I was surrounded with the spirit of fear, with the spirit of death, because my people were seeking for my life to kill me. And God spoke to me in a dream. And I always say this to the people, I want people to understand me. I'm not saying that every dream that you get comes from God, but this was a dream from God, though it scared me. In the dream, the heaven was opened. And when I opened my eyes, I saw someone who was shining brighter than a sun. And the power lifted me and put him to the ground. You know, God is so amazing. I was in the branch of the tree, but when the power lifted me, I, in the dream, I saw myself on the ground. And he spoke to me these words. He said, Fred Moyimba. And I'm so amazed that Jesus can even speak both my names. He speaks Luganda. 
Sometimes, you know, when we are going through challenges and hardships, we think that God doesn't know where we are. He doesn't know our languages. Listen, God will speak your mother language because he wants you to understand every single thing he's revealing to you. And he said, Fred Muimba, you have been rejected by your people, but I'm taking you as my son. You will be my servant. I will take you to the nations. I will bless you. You will be a father to the fatherless. You will be a blessing to your people in Uganda. And you will be a blessing to your own family. Yes. Yes. The dream scared me to death. I said, okay, I'm not sleeping here in this jungle again. Because if I sleep here, the next night maybe I'll die. Then I decided to go back to the capital city. Remember, I accepted Jesus in the capital city when I was doing my studies. And now my parents, they are looking for my life. They want to kill me. So I had to go back to Kampala. Not to study, but to start a new life. When I arrived in Kampala, I went to the church where the street evangelism, where the street evangelists in, took me. I spoke to the pastor. I explained the challenges and the hardships I was going through. And the pastor was, he was not ready to take me in his house. I felt so broken. I thought like I deserved to die. You know, I thought about my parents who rejected me. They were seeking for my life. They were ready to kill me. I came back to the church where I expected to be helped. And there was no one to help me. I asked the pastor if he could allow me to stay in the church. And they said, no, we don't allow people to sleep in the church. As the evening service was over, they asked me to leave the church premises and I ended up going to the street. And I learned that some kids, some children end up on the street not because they want, but because of hardships in life. I tried to identify myself with the street, with the street kids and something happened. The street kids wanted me to go and break into people's houses at night. And I said, no, I'm not going because I'm born again. I gave my life to Jesus. The street kids started beating me up. They kicked me up and down until my nose was bleeding. And I said, God, if I'm being rejected by everybody on earth, why am I living? But listen, let me say this to you. Maybe I'm speaking to someone who has ever gone through the same kind of life. Listen, it doesn't matter what you are going through. The moment you will trust God, the moment you know that the Lord can lead you through, he will do the same to you, the yes. same thing he has done in my life. Yes. Let me hear somebody giving a hand clap of praise. Somebody giving a hand clap of praise to God. This is why I keep on saying this to you, that, you know, trusting God is a choice. If you decide to pay attention to every advice that people are giving you today, you never trust God. Trust God. It has no any other method. And you never trust God, you never learn to trust God unless when you decide to walk with God on a daily basis. Jesus called his disciples. Jesus was very clear. He said, okay, hey, guys, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The journey, if you decide to journey with Jesus, he will show you what to do. He will show you, he will teach you the next step to take. Amen. You never learn to trust God. It's another point here. You never learn to trust God. You will never learn to trust God if you don't have any reason to trust him. 
You know, if you, you know, if you don't have any, any reason to trust him, then why should you trust him? I'm a kind of a guy who have been thrown in jail for sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Seriously beaten. I was accused forcefully that I stole a gun and I never stole a gun. I preached to the Muslim family, the mother and the daughter accepted Christ. So the man he was a policeman and he decided to create a false accusation against me that I stole his gun. Yet he was hiding the gun under his bed. Three days later in jail, think about it. You are in jail, they beat you every, uh, every early in the morning. They pour water on you and they beat you, forcing you to tell them where the gun is. Now, the choice is yours. Are you to continue trusting God who makes you end up in such situations? Or you say, I'm done with Jesus. But I trusted God. Three days later, this lady, the wife of the Muslim man, came to the police station and he said, my husband is choosing this man forcefully. He, this man never took the gun. My husband is hiding the gun under the bed. But this man just shared with us the love of Jesus Christ. That's why he's here. The police officers went to the house. They picked up the gun. And they, tried, they arrested the man who was, accusing, who was accusing me. And they asked me to open up a case against him. And I said, no, I forgive him. Amen. On that very day, three police officers accepted Jesus. <laughs> you know, sometimes people try to figure out, you know, how, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Like, you know, we try to figure out, you know, what God wants us to do. And we want to do things our own way. And I want to say this to you. Man, you are off track. Only those who are being guided by the Spirit of God. Those are the sons and daughters of God. You cannot guide God. And listen to this. You can never avoid to live a life of confusion if you decide to figure out what God wants you to do. Come on. But if you listen to what the, Spirit of, what the Spirit of God is saying and you trust him, he will guide you and he will order your steps. Listen, I don't know what God has called you to do, but stop figuring out what God is, you know, you, know, you try to do things according to your own understanding. That's why the church is failing to live and to move in that you know in this anointing yes. there is a special anointing which belongs to the church today but the church cannot tap into that anointing because we do things according to our own understanding listen church yes the more i have trusted god the more the lord has made things clear to me whom am i that I should stand before you, doctors and professors, people who are highly educated. I'm not all that educated. I was chased away from home because I accepted Christ. And that was the end of my education. I decided to trust God. And guess what? When I stayed in Kampala trusting God going to church for Bible studies every evening. Two years later, they told me that my dad was seriously sick. He was in a coma. He was about to die. I said, okay. I decided to go back and meet my, my dad. After two years, they didn't want to see me because they knew that I killed the snake. And I asked them to give me a chance to lay my hands on my dad. My dad was dying. He was in a coma. And when I laid my hands on him, he started sneezing. He opened his eyes. An hour later, he was able to sit and to eat. Wow. I've seen the grace of God. You choose to trust God. You'll be amazed about what God is going to do. 
My dad gave his life to the Lord. My mom accepted Christ. My brothers and sisters accepted Christ. <laughs> Guys, what are you waiting for? Hallelujah. What do you lose when you trust God? Hallelujah. What do you lose when you trust the most high God? And listen to this. My dad told me, okay, can we set this house of the evil spirits on fire? We set it on fire. When my dad accepted Christ, we set the shrine on fire. Hallelujah. There's one thing that you need to do. It's not about your, edu your education. I'm not saying that it is bad to be educated. That's not what I'm saying. But if you think that you put your education before God, it doesn't work. That's why God appoints people like me all the way from Africa and bring them before the highly educated people that I may speak. And if you listen to what I'm saying today, you'll be blessed by the Most High God. And your lives will never be the same again. Amen. It is written. Trust in the Lord. And do not lean on your own understanding. Right. I've gone through a lot of stuff. Today we have a church back home in Kampala. We don't have that number yet, but the church can hold 1,500 members. It's quite huge. <laughs> we, have, we have started 38 churches. We train pastors. We, have, we started a school of leaders, and we train pastors. We lay our hands on them and send them in the villages to do their job. But if you focus your eyes on the challenges and the hardships you are going through, you never do anything for God. How many, are, how many of you here understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. You know, I was telling the people this morning, you know, how God brought me here the first time. God is so amazing. Once God says something, hey, don't doubt him. Come on. You know, you know what I used to do? What I used to do? Well, oh, man, time is gone. You know, in Africa, in, Af in Africa, I speak for two hours, but in America, you have to speak for 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know, in America, America, people keep time, okay? So, someone, you know, I, I made a statement, you know, don't blame me for this, but this is what, this is what, this is what we say. In, in, you know, Americans, in Africa, we have time, okay? In America, people have their watches because you know the watches say, What time is it? And I, okay. And we spend a lot of time praying, worshiping God, stay there for hours and hours, and I love that. Come on. Woo. Okay, let me tell you a story. How did I come here? I used it to write to every Christian organization, you know, if I could get their mailing address. I used to write to them and I share my life history, how God saved me from the powers of witchcraft. And I was invited to come to Virginia Ashland to share my testimony. Now, this was another challenge because I needed to get a visa, I needed to get a passport and also get the air ticket to come here. We have people here who think like who think that they can do they cannot do anything because they don't have enough. Listen, you don't need to know a whole lot of things to serve God. It takes one thing. When God says say yes and go on, He will take care of the rest. Let me hear somebody giving a hand of praise. Yes. And I've learned to trust God. I went three times to the American embassy to apply for the visa and they were denying me the visa every time I could go there. They said, sir, we don't allow you to go to the United States of America. I said, okay. I could go back at the second time. They said, we said we were not going anywhere. I said, okay. Then I went to pray and I prayed and God said you are going. I went back to the American embassy. They said, no, we told you are not going. The fourth time I came back and they said, Man, what's wrong with you? We told you. I said, yeah. Why do you keep on coming here? 
I said, God tells me. He said, God tells you. Okay, if God tells you, we'll give you the visa. This is the first visa. Trust in God, even when what God says don't make sense to you. Give a hand clap of praise to God in this house. Please, please. I don't know what God has called you to do. I have no idea. And do you know what a loss you are bringing in the kingdom of God if you refuse to trust God? It is written that the just shall live by faith. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. It is for him. Come on. So when I got the visa to come, now that there was another challenge to raise the money for the ticket to come here. I went from one person to the other asking them, please give me some money. If God ever blesses me, I'll come back and bless you. And I, I managed to raise 723 US dollars. But that money was not enough for me to fly from Uganda to Virginia. So I, I said, okay. I left Uganda and I went to Nairobi looking for a cheaper ticket. But when I got in Nairobi, still that money was not enough for me to fly to Virginia. And I said, okay. I'm a kind of a guy when God says something, you know, if God says jump upside down, I, you know, I don't question. I will just jump and go there. I will just jump. Now, I decided to pay for my ticket from Nairobi to New York. And according to me, I thought that I was going to go by foot from New York to Ashland, Virginia. <laughs> How many of you here are ready to risk for God? You know, people don't want to risk that much. They don't want. Now, when I reached my hands in my pocket to, to pick the money to pay for the ticket, the travel agent asked me again, are you flying to New York? I said, yes, sir. Because New York and New York sounds the same to me, you know? <laughs> so I ended up flying from, you know, I paid for my ticket from Nairobi, connecting to... Tel Aviv, Israel, Tel Aviv to Newark. And as the flight was landing in Newark, New man, time is over. Don't worry about it. Go, go. Pastor? Okay. As the flight was landing in Newark, New Jersey, there was a gentleman who wanted to take pictures. You know, God will never do any mistake. I was sitting on the window, and the gentleman wanted to take pictures as the flight was landing. So we exchanged the, the seats. He took the pictures, and I thought that that was the end of the story. Now, when the flight landed, I went to the migration officers, and they started questioning me. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Virginia, Ashland. Okay, why have you landed in Newark, New Jersey? I had no answer. How much money do you have in your pocket? I said, I have four dollars. Okay, sir, we are not going to allow you to go to Virginia because you don't know how you're going to travel from here to the other side. Can you imagine? She picked my passport and took my passport to cancel the visa. And as this migration officer took my passport, I raised my hands, I shouted to the top of my voice, I prayed in tongues, I prayed in my mother's language. And she thought that I was mad at her. <laughs> mm. But God is never too late. Everybody say, God is never too late. <laughs> if you trust in God, God will make a way for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. He will create a way for you. Now, I didn't know that my shouting is going to make the migration officer mad and the same shouting was going to cause the man, you know, that man who took the pictures as the flight was landing, he came to me and he said, you know, I was putting on the collar for the reverend. You know, I'm a reverend, you know, I'm ordained. I'm an ordained preacher, so I'm a reverend. Now, he came to me and said, reverend, what's wrong? I said, okay, I took a wrong flight. Instead of flying to New York, to New York, I flew to Newark, New Jersey. He said, okay. How much money do you have? I said, I have four dollars. He said, four dollars? Oh. Okay, don't worry. He said to me, I am a pastor in this city. I left Africa.
Africa with all that ignorance. But God was there. I don't know how many times we've lost this. When God wants you to trust him so that he will show his glory as we've been singing here. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. We need your glory. You cannot tap in that glory unless when you are willing to trust him. Now the pastor gave me his contacts, the contacts of the church and the phone number and he, he went away. He said, when they come back to you, don't tell them that we came on the same flight. I said, okay. An hour later, the migration officer came back with her boss and he, she was determined to deport me back to Africa. And her boss, you know, I gained such a tremendous favor before her boss. And her boss said, okay, let me talk to him one more time. He asked me, where are you going? I told him and I gave him the contacts from the pastor and I was given a visa to enter the United States of America. <laughs> this is my prayer today. This is my prayer. As you are here, why should this man of God allow me to speak to you with this kind of broken English I have? Why should he do that unless when the father wanted you to hear this message? Come on. Come on. Trusting God is a choice you have to make. We have a video for a few minutes if you allow me to show it. This, this, is, this is not an advert. These are the things that I've gone through. If God can use a person like me who is not educated, someone who can fly from Africa thinking that New York is New York, what about you? Who, you, know, you know, you people, you know where Uganda is. You just go on the map and you Google, you find, you know, I think it will be more easier for you. But people don't trust God enough. People are not willing. I have a video here that I want to show you. If it comes up... It shows where Uganda is. That's the church we started with. You know, I came here. That's the second church we constructed after the small one we started with. And the church was demolished by the Muslims because they were choosing us to make excessive noise. I did not give up. I said, okay, I will build, we will build a better church. And that's the church we have in Kampala today. When you trust God, even you, not, even you don't understand the whole thing, God will help you out. He will. My mom and my dad, when they gave their lives to the Lord, they became members of the church. Oh, that's my wife. You know, when I see, when I look back and I see what God has done, those are pastors we trained and we sent them to lead the churches. And you know, when you get to those places, you'll be amazed to see how these guys are dedicated and committed to serve God. It's because I trusted God. We are constructing an orphanage home. So far, we have four blocks. They are not fully completed. That's the one. But I'm believing God. And we believe God, you know, we need to build another administration block which is going to cost us 130 US dollars. 130,000 US dollars. And I don't know where it's gonna come when, where it's gonna come from. I know God will provide. That's my dad in church and my mom. We I baptized my mom, I baptized my brothers, that's my dad in church. When I was sleeping in the jungle and I was sleeping on the street, I never knew that God could do this. 
That's one thing that you need to do. Trust him. We dug a well, a, a, a well we call it, you know, we call it a boa hole. 130 feet deep. Because, you know, I believe in God. I want to do an orphanage home as God spoke to me. Everything that I do, I do it by faith. The first well that we dug collapsed in, and then we had to do another one. I almost died in that borehole. We used our hands. We put one person in the bucket, he goes down there, dig the dirt, bring it on, on the surface, and then you go down again. I have laid my life down whenever I hear the voice of the Father. I don't know what God, what God is calling you to do. We have a lot of excuses. If we learn to say yes, the will of the Father, you will accomplish much. If you learn to trust Him, you will change millions of lives. And as uh, I want to hand over to the pastor, can we bow our heads and pray? Let's just have a, a short prayer. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I know you have permitted me through your servant to be here. Father, I want to thank you. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing in this house, oh God. He's obedient to you, and he hears your voice. My God, I have spoken in a very simple way as you gave me the message. Trusting you, and to trust you, it is a choice people have to make and if they need to learn to trust you they have to work with you on a daily basis and father if they don't have any need to trust you they cannot trust you still bless this church bless the house of God and move let revival break out yes. in this house Yes. to the neighboring community. Father, I prophesy this. It is going to happen very soon. And Father, help them, Lord, to be ready to embrace what is coming. Yes. My God, receive all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Pastor. Hallelujah. Can you give Jesus praise this morning? Come on.